In today's video, I'll be going through integration by parts in C4. Now, the rule used for integration by parts is denoted in this red box here. Okay, I'm not sure if you want to quickly just pause your screen and make a note of this rule, as I'll use it to solve the two examples I have below. So, moving on to example one. How do we use this rule here to solve this integral here? We can see that we need the integral in the form f multiplied by g dash. So, how do we choose what f will be and what g dash will be? The rule I was taught was we always choose f such that when we differentiate it, it becomes a nice easy number or term. Okay, so for instance, in this case, I would choose f to equal x and therefore f dash would be equal to 1. It's a nice easy term, the differential. If I chose f to equal e to the power of x, f dash would be equal to e to the power of x and I have made no progress whatsoever when I differentiated f. So I wouldn't choose f to be equal e to the power of x, I would choose f to equal x. Okay, so this leaves me with um, g dash to equal e to the power of x. Now the rule states I need to have g, which is the integral of g dash, which is equal to e to the power of x. <coughs> so therefore the integral of x multiplied by e to the power of x is equal to f multiplied by g, which is x multiplied by e to the power of x, minus the integral of f dash, which is 1, multiplied by g, which is e to the x. So therefore, it's minus the integral of just e to the power of x. Now, this is equal to, integral of e to the x is just equal to e to the x. So that's how you solve example one. The main point to note from this is we choose f to equal, we basically choose f such that when we differentiate it, it becomes a nice easy number or term. Okay, so moving on to example two. In this case, I've noted this question down because no matter what we choose as f, we end up basically going nowhere. So if I chose f to equal e to the power of x, the differential of f would be e to the x, which means I've made no progress. If I chose f to equal sorry, excuse me, sine x, the differential of f would therefore be cos x. Again, I'm making no real progress. I'm just getting sine x cos x. The term is no easier, if that makes sense. Okay, so how do we go about solving this type of question? So, in this case, when you have a situation like this, it doesn't make a difference what we choose as f or g dash. So just out of randomness, I'm going to choose f to equal e to the power of x, and I'll choose g dash to equal sine x. I could have done it the other way. It makes no difference in this situation. This is sine x. Okay, so I need to have an f dash, which is equal to e to the power of x. I need to have a g, which is equal to the integral of sine x, which is equal to minus cos x. So the integral of e to the x multiplied by sine of x is equal to fg, which is minus e to the power of x cos x minus the integral of f dash, which is e to the x multiplied by g, which is minus cos x. We can see we've got two negatives here, so we can just kind of make it into a plus because it's this minus and minus make a plus, okay? So here now we've got another integration by parts. So what I'll do, I'll do this in another color just to make it more clear. So how do we go about doing this one now? Again, it makes no difference why I choose as f and g. If I chose f to equal e to the x, differential is equal to e to the x. If I chose f to equal cos x, if I differentiate that, I still get, I only get uh, minus sine x. So again, I'm making no progress. But therefore I choose anyway, so I just choose, in this case I'll choose f is equal to e to the x power of x, and I'll choose g dash to equal cos x. So the differential of f is equal to e to the power of x, and the integral of g dash is equal to sine x. Okay, so the integral of e to the x sine x is equal to minus e x cos x 
plus and I'll do this integration bit in blue and I put it in big brackets just to make it clear like so and what's in this bracket is that basically this integration of this by parts okay so here I need to do f multiplied by g which would be equal to e to the power of x sine x minus the integral of e to the power of x multiplied by sine x which is just f dash multiplied by g which is required by the rule okay so this is in blue is the integration by parts of just this term here e to the x multiplied by cos x this is not a plus sorry this looks a bit confusing this is a multiplication okay so and what we can do is we can multiply everything out to make it a bit more easier to visually see so it's e to the power of x sine x is equal to minus e to the power of x cos x plus e to the power of x sine x minus e to the x sine x dx so again we have to do integration by parts but I'm not sure if you've noticed this term here is the same as this term here now so what I can do is I can bring this onto the other side and say 2 e to the power of x sine x is equal to minus e to the power of x cos x plus e to the power of x sine x okay and from that we can see the integral of e to the power of x sine x is equal to minus e to the x cos x plus e to the power of x sine x divided by 2 okay and always remember to just add a c at the end so that's how you go about doing this type of situation where no matter what you choose as f you end up with the same term or just an equally horrible term so i hope this helps with integration by parts i've tried to note down the two cases where which may cause problems again just practice with these and i'm sure you'll get enough experience and become outstanding with this so have a great day thank you very much and goodbye